Do you want to know how to go from bare 3D print to full finished kit? Then stick around. The first thing I do with every print is I wash it. I wash it first in used IPA, then in mean green, and then in clean IPA. Then I let it sit for about 24 hours and dry up, then I cure it. Now we're going to start cleaning up the parts. We're going to fill in the drain holes and we're also going to look for marks from the supports. This way we can take care of those and clean them up. We're going to do the same thing on the body as we're doing on the head and we're also going to do it on the arms, legs, wherever these support marks are. To clean up the support marks, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of my resin from my vat, I'm gonna put it in a little plastic cup, and then I'm gonna use a brush and cover up those marks. We're also gonna use a UV flashlight. This way we can cure that resin and get onto sanding. I've provided a link for the UV flashlight in the description below. The same cleanup as we did on the other parts is also going to be on the arms. Now we have to sand things down and we're going to use Mr. Hobby's G tool which will take down the resin pretty quickly. There are parts that Mr. G tool cannot get to, like in the creases, so we're gonna end up having to use sandpaper to smooth down the rest of the resin and make sure that we don't have any lumps. Now that everything is cleaned up, we're gonna prime the whole model and I'm gonna use Mr. Surfacer 1000 on this. I like that because it fills in a lot of the tiny scratches made from sanding. For the used look of the mask, that white yellowish, I used scale 75 white. I also used scale 75 soul yellow. It was about a 15 to 1 mix white to yellow. But you may want to play with your colors because you may not want it like this. So just play with your ratios before you start painting. Now that I have the color that I want on the mask, I'm going to start painting in the red of the triangle. We're going to start doing the dots and we're also going to start doing the straps on the back of the mask. Now that we've painted up all the black on the mask and the red, we're going to cover it up with Ammo by MIG's liquid mask. This is to protect all the work we've done and then we're going to start working on the black because we don't want to get overspray. I've learned though that you should put this on a little bit thicker because if it's too thin and you can see through the mask, then sometimes the paint gets through there and you have little speckles. 
Now that the liquid mask is finally dry, we can start painting the black without worrying about overspray getting on our fresh paint work and ruining it. We're using scale 75 black for the matte black on this piece. Now that the black is done, I'm going to start doing the straps on the mask and around the back of the head. I'm using scale 75 again, we're using leather brown, and I'm using a round headed brush. I prefer using a round headed brush, this way I can push and pull the paint instead of dabbing at it, which will leave strokes in the paint. It's a lot easier for me to do it this way and keep things looking clean. After the first layer was done, I went around and added a second layer of the leather brown to the straps. The next thing I worked on was the rivets in the mask. I used Vallejo's Oily Steel, which is actually one of my favorite colors to use for metal. Now that his head is all painted up, I shot a clear coat of Mr. Super Clear Gloss on him so we could start the weathering process on the whole mask. To weather his mask, all I did was put a black wash all over the leather strap and also his face mask and then I used a moistened Q-tip to take everything off once it was dry. The straps are done, we put a wash on his face, and it's time to take all this off the, with the same method using a cotton swab moistened with water. And here I was using a moistened paintbrush to blend in some of that wash and remove a lot more of it.
And here's Mickey's head complete. I flat coated him with Ammo by Migs Super Matte. This way it had that really dull look to it. And then I used a satin on the leather straps because I wanted those a little bit shinier. Then a dull finish and on his head I used Ammo by Migs Regular Matte. Now it's time to work on Mickey's body. I painted the black first, so I'm covering that with Ammo by Migs Ultra Liquid Mask. This way we can save that black without getting any white on it and having to redo it over and over. And then we're gonna do the same thing on his neck. Here I'm gonna paint Mickey's gloves white first because I don't wanna get a dark color on his gloves. It's a lot harder for me to get that white over there. So we'll finish up his gloves with the white and the little black marks on there and we'll do this on both sides. Then we'll mask it off and we'll move on to painting the blue of his jacket. Now that the hands is done, before we start doing that blue, we're using Ammo by Migs Enamel Starship Wash on the gloves. His gloves really can't be this white because he is Jason Voorhees and his hands would be pretty dirty. So we're gonna dirty them up with this enamel and then we're gonna take it off with Enamel White Spirits. Now that the gloves are all weathered up and they're sealed with Ammo by Mig Liquid Mask, we're gonna start painting his arms and jacket and we're using Scale 75 Canter Brick Blue. Mickey's arms and jacket are done. The only thing I have to do is flat coat it and we can move on to more pieces of this build. Mickey's machete was done using Vallejo's oily steel again and we're just gonna go over that with a black wash. The brighter part of the machete blade was done using Folk Arts Anniversary Silver. Mickey's jacket is done. He has his flat coat on. He looks all grungy the way I wanted him to. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on his pants and we're gonna add a little more liquid mask in there too. And I almost forgot. Here we are putting a wash on the blade. This way we could bring out those ripples, the texture that was put into the 3D print, bringing those out, making it look pretty good. And the next thing after that is we're gonna work on the handle. Working on the handle, I used three colors. The first color I used was Scale 75 Walnut for the base coat of the handle. There are some little metal pieces in there holding the handle together, and I used, again, Vallejo Oily Steel on that. And then once everything was dry, I went over it with Game Wash Umber from Vallejo also. And here's the finished handle. I really wasn't too worried about it because it's gonna be jammed into Mickey's hand and all you're really gonna see is the front and back of the piece. Getting back onto Mickey's body, we're gonna start his pants. And for his pants, we use Scale 75 Gobi Brown. Now that his pants are all blocked in, we're just gonna use the same method we've been doing, a black sludge wash all over his pants, and then we'll take it off with a moistened Q-tip.
Again, I got his pants to where I want them, looking all grungy. All of the black wash is off. Now we can move on to his boots and we're getting closer to the finish of this build. I have the liquid mask on his pant legs, this way we don't get the paint on. The same paint will be used as we used for his leather straps, it's going to be the brown leather. And then we're probably going to use the goby on his shoelaces because they're a little bit darker. Here I just added a little bit of white to the brown leather and I'm adding it to the toes just to give it a little bit of a worn look. For the soles of his boots I'm using black leather and we're also going to do the little arch in between the heel and the front of the sole because that may show when we put them on the base. And here we're just using the Gobi Brown from Scale 75 to darken up his laces. We will put a wash all over his boots to bring out any detail that's on them. All the paint work is now done on Mickey. All that has to be done is to seal him in with flat coat. The last step for the machete was adding blood. I used Scale 75 Blood Red, a paintbrush, and just flicked it on. It's time to work on the base. The first thing I'm going to do is paint Mickey Jason with yellow, that sole yellow from Scale 75. Once that's dry, I'm going to go over the bottom half of it with orange, and I used orange from Tamiya. Now that we have the nameplate taped off, we're just going to go around the whole rim and paint it black from scale 75. Now that the rim is done, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to base coat the base with Tamiya Flat Earth. Now that the flat earth is dry, I'm going to go over it with Vallejo Wash Oiled Earth. Our wash is dry, so the next thing I'm going to do is dry brush with Scale 75 Thaw Brown to bring out the high points. Our high points are all taken care of and the next piece of the puzzle is adding static grass with our homemade static grass applicator. There will be a link in the description below of videos we have how to make that. We're going to use 50% school glue and 50% water and we're going to brush it around the spots we want to hit with the static grass applicator. And then we're going to apply our grass and we're going to do this multiple times until we get the look that we want.
After multiple rounds of using the glue, static grass, and applicator, we finally have the base looking how we want it and fluffing the grass up a little bit. And now that the base is done, we're gonna add some DAP Rapid Fuse to the footprints, place Mickey in his final resting place, and call it a day. Now enjoy the final pictures of Mickey Voorhees.